Okay, we are a uh, Team Storm Cellar. I'm Jamie Henderson, and this is my husband, Steve Steese. Hi there. And um, we own and operate uh, the Redstone Vineyard, and we are sitting at about 6,000 feet above sea level in the middle of our Riesling vines. Um, what's happening right now is we are watching the grapes ripen. Uh, we are making sure that their sugar levels, acid levels, pH, everything is just what we'd like um, you know, to make a balanced uh, wine. Sure. Everything else that we grow here at this vineyard has already been harvested. Um, the, the other grapes we grow, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, they all tend to be relatively early ripeners, but Riesling is our, our love-hate relationship here because the wines that come from these grapes are truly amazing, but it takes so much longer to ripen than anything else we grow here. So we're still at least a week, if not two weeks away from starting real Riesling harvest. So it's a nail biter every year. It basically gets backed up to the first frost sometime in October, even though we're coasting into some nice warm yeah. harvest days this year for the first time since we've owned this property. I think it's going to be the easiest harvest Knock we've had wood. to manage here <laughs> yet. So. You know, the vintage variation here is dramatic, and that's that's what we love about this place. You know, the wines won't taste the same after, year after year, um, and it's challenging, but it's also super rewarding. In 2018, our Chardonnay, for example, that we made, it was a super hot vintage, similar to the 2020 that we're in now, and necessitated a little bit of oak treatment. Last year's vintage, 2019, so bracingly wet and cool that the Chardonnay barely got ripe. So the new vintage we're about to release barely saw any oak at all, almost a classic Chablis style. So really lean and we'll racy, take what each Chris. vintage gives us and see what the best, the best wine it. we can make with it. Um, so I know that what we're going to be tasting with you guys here is our dry Riesling. This is our flagship wine from the 2019 vintage. Uh, the 2018 vintage um, got a ton of great press, double gold medal in the Governor's Cup, uh, amazing write-up in the Wall Street Journal, and we've been sold out for a long time, so we are really excited to have a brand new vintage. We made about 300 cases this year, um, all from the Riesling vines that we're standing right in the middle of right now. Mm -hmm. It's super special, this bottle, because it's um, it says on the label, it's estate bottled and grown. Uh, when you see the word estate on a bottle of wine, it means that those grapes were grown there, processed there and the wine was made and bottled there. So it's not necessarily like an indication of quality per se, um, but it can be because uh, we painstakingly nurture and farm all of our vines, basically the two of us. Uh, we have one other full-time employee that's with us over the summer, uh, Keelan Smith, and really among the three of us, we, we tend these uh, basically like 15 producing acres. We have about two acres that are under vine right now. Um, with new plantings. So really this has been just a lot of TLC that we've applied this vineyard. I do want to mention since we have this, by the time that we do our live, the vines will be in their dormant state. There will be no more green foliage. All of the grapes will have been harvested. And by that time, we'll have a slowly ferm uh, fermenting batch of Riesling. And as far as our fermentations go, our winemaking style, we like to use temperature controlled stainless steel tanks. Uh, we take the grapes, we're able to press them in our press whole cluster, so we don't have to crush or destem. Um, one of the reasons that we chose to not crush or destem to use whole cluster press is that back to that you know high U high intensity that UV light you can get sunburn on your grapes. Uh, we really try to moderate that by keeping the canopy a little bit more full. But, you know, the grapes will get a little sunburn. You don't want to impart, well, we don't want to impart our wines with that bitterness from that sunburned skin. And so we're able to gently crush those grapes in that pneumatic bladder press, and they immediately go into a temperature-controlled stainless steel tank. And we like to keep our fermentation temperatures kind of around like that 55 degree sweet spot. And so our fermentations can take anywhere from a month. Uh, one of our tanks took about four months last year. And you're, we don't wanna let those fermentations go out of control. A byproduct of fermentation is heat. And heat can actually burn off those delicate nuances, those, uh, you know, those really, you know, those aromatics that are just, you want to preserve them. And so that's one of the reasons why we choose to kind of do a slow and low fermentation process. But back to the Riesling grape, right now, if we were to press these, we would have, um, you would get some, you know, some juicy fruity notes, but the acid level is a little too high. So to tell you where we are, we're at about, I'd say 21 degrees bricks. And bricks is a measurement of sugar. And, and you know, you pick that kind of knowing how many degrees bricks are in your wine, 
which will let you know the resulting alcohol once all of those sugars are fermented. And we're really looking for some balance. We want that acid level to drop so it's a drinkable wine, but still have that refreshing acidity that you know and love in Riesling. And we're also looking for what's called phenolic ripeness. So even though the numbers might line up when you get your um, grape sample numbers back, your pH, your bricks, your sugar, um, and your acid, but you know, we go through and we actually taste the grapes for phenolic ripeness, meaning we want the actual flavors to be ready. Sometimes in Colorado, you know, you get these heat spikes and it's been a hot summer. Everything's ripening faster, but sometimes the plant can't catch up and actually give you those, you know, you need to make sure all the numbers line up, but sometimes a few, let the grapes hang on the vine a few days, weeks later to really get those, you know, peachy notes, those apricot stone fruit notes, um, to where it's a holistic wine. It's not just perfect in the textbook, but not expressing in the glass. Yeah. Well, I assume we're going to dive into a tasting here, so maybe we pour a glass and cheers everybody, and yes. the rest of the tasting will be the virtual tasting, huh? So. Yeah, and, and it's, um, today's Thursday, I think, um, the 24th, and uh, we've been working nonstop. We really, and people say, like, do you take a day off? I know all of the other farmers and winemakers in the valley um, can probably say the same thing. You, you just don't. <laughs> um, you're basically like a one-person, two-person, small-team crew. But today we decided to have a little day off. We're going to do some paperwork and um, enjoy a little wine at whatever time this is this morning. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you all. I can't wait to hear your questions yeah. and see what you have to say about this dry Riesling. We think it's really drinking excellently this year and by the time uh, we're tasting this in December or January, whenever this tasting lines up, uh, I think this wine's going to be an exciting spot. We Riesling goes on a magical journey once you put it in a bottle and this wine could age for years and years. So we'll be excited to taste it with you here um, and cheers. Cheers.